<clears throat> okay, hello everyone in a new video. So we have reached part 2 of chapter 5 which is the chapter of kinematics for grade 11. So previously in, in part 1 of this chapter we have discussed uh, uh, the motion. We have discussed the motion in one dimension and we have uh, discussed two types of motion and they are given by URM and UVRM uh, in which UVRM can be UARM or UDRM now we need to generalize this uh, for two dimension then uh, let's say that we are in section number two motion in two dimension Then previously the motion was referred to one dimension so we used to consider an oriented ax axis say for example it's positive from left to right so let's say that this is x prime and this is x and this is the origin O and this is a unit vector I along the x axis so we used to consider a particle M a particle M moving along the x-axis now since here we are talking about the motion in two dimension one axis alone is not sufficient to describe uh, the motion then we need to consider another axis usually we take this axis or axis perpendicular to the given x-axis like this so previously the point M just uh, was just moving uh, to the right or to the left to the right or to the left but now we may consider also that uh, the point M can move up and down so uh, let me say that this is the y-axis this is y prime by okay and uh, so it's perpendicular to the x-axis now the particle M may be located anywhere in the plane like this so let's say that this is the point M with respect to the origin O because we have considered a unit vector along the x-axis then we consider another unit vector perpendicular to I uh, which is given by J then also J is considered to be as a unit vector so the magnitude of a J is equal to 1 okay as well as the magnitude of I so uh, also I need to mention the following that uh, always all axes or axes in physics are labeled by physical quantities so in this case uh, let me drop down this x prime and this y prime and let me say that okay so the position x here carries the unit m which stands for the assignment of distance which is meter as well as y now previously we were referring to x and y the same labels that we use in mathematics but now here we are ref referring to the physical quantities given by the position or the distance so this is y carrying the quantity or the unit m okay so we may see in another examples that the axes are labeled by time and velocity now just uh, for the purpose of this section uh, these axes are labeled by the physical quantities position okay so x is position which represents distance expressed in meters as the same as y so here y for example can be in kilometers or centimeters but now we are taking the SI unit for short now in this case the position vector as we have defined previously independent of the uh, frame or the dimensions that we are working with is uh, the vector joining the reference and the particle So now the position vector r, previously we were writing in one dimension the position vector r to be x i. Now in this case, the position vector lie in a plane x o y. So part of this vector, so this is the position vector r, part of this vector lies in the o x axis. So let me say, that this is the x component which is given by xi 
but also part of it lies on the y-axis which is given by plus y i so the vector position r uh, in two dimension is expressed as follows x i plus y, uh, y j sorry here y j and the unit of r is given by meters for sure now here notice that this is an equality or a vector relation because on the left we have vector and on the right we have vectors okay so these these are numbers whenever a number is multiplied by a vector it is a vector and here whenever a number is multipl multiplied by a vector is a vector okay so this is a vector relation now before discussing the types of motion that are given by URM or UVRM along the X or the Y axis let me, dis uh, let me discuss an important notion which is the trajectory so let me say that section 2.1 the trajectory so the trajectory is the path or the actual path followed by the particle so this is the physical definition of the trajectory now here the point M at a given instant but uh, for a time or a interval or several instants it may cover this path like this so it's moving along this curve so in this case this red line here is the trajectory okay so it's the path followed by the particle m <clears throat> then okay so mathematically we can say that mathematically the trajectory is the relation between the brackets the relation between x the variables x and y so what does x represent x represent the position of the particle m along the x-axis and what does y represent the position of m along the y-axis okay now what types of trajectories that we are interested in the first one is the straight line And mathematically, it's given by a linear in X and in Y. So uh, an another trajectory is given by parabola. So this is linear in one variable. And quadratic and the other now as for the circle trajectory or circular trajectory circle is given by the general equation which is given by x minus a to the power 2 plus y minus b to the power 2 is equal to r to the power 2 in this case the particle m will be moving along a circle C of center I and radius R the coordinates of the center are given by I, A and B so I will discuss these three trajectories in the following examples and exercises okay so let's consider the following example now let me add the following questions that number one write the position vector And number two, determine the trajectory. Okay, so the answer of this example, the number one, the position factor R, which is equal to OM, because the particle is being labeled by the letter M, is given by XI plus YJ. 
In this case, x is parameterized by the parameter t, which is time, so it's given by 2t multiplied by i. As for the variable y, it's given by 60 j. Then the position vector is given by r is equal to 2ti plus 60j. So notice that this is the position vector r, whereas these equations are called the parametric equations. Why they are referred to the parametric equations? Because they are parameterized by the parameter t, which stands for time. Okay? Now, okay, another side remark which is important, why we didn't discuss trajectory in the case of one dimension, because we only have one trajectory which is like rectilinear, okay, which is a straight line. No need to distinguish uh, between different trajectories in the case of the motion occurs along a straight line. Now, a number two, they are telling me to determine the trajectory, then if we refer here, to the mathematical definition of the trajectory is the relation between x and y. So we need to find the relation between x and y knowing that the variable x is given by 2t and the variable y is given by 60. From this we can say that t is equal to x divided by 2. Now replace t is equal to x divided by 2 in y is equal to 60. Then we got that y is equal to 60. Now, the value of t is given by x divided by 2, which is equal to 3x. Then the trajectory is given by y is equal to 3x. So this is the equation of the trajectory. Now, what's the type of the trajectory or the shape? So notice that here, if it's linear in x and y, what does it mean linear in x and y? So the power of y is 1 and the power of x is 1. Then the trajectory is a straight line. So the trajectory is a straight line. Okay, and uh, we all know how to plot this in a given orthonormal system. Now let's consider another example, more advanced example, and let me copy these questions here. So the first one is given by that we need to write the position vector. So this is example number two. Then the answer, then the position vector r is given by OM which is equal to xi plus yj, which is equal to 4ti then the position vector is given by r is equal to 40 plus okay. So this is the position vect vector. For sure, the unit of R is M. Now, in number two, they are telling us to determine the trajectory. So remember that the trajectory is a relation between X and Y. So mainly, we need to get rid of the parameter T. And recall that these equations are said to be the parametric equations. Then we have that X is equal to 4T and Y is equal to 2T squared plus T. So from this, Remember that we, we always need to extract t from one of the variables. So here, because it is real linear, it's easier to say that t is equal to four, uh, x divided by 4. Then in this case, so what we are doing here is we replace t and y. So replace t is equal to x divided by 4n, y is equal to 2t squared plus t. Then we have that y is equal to 2t squared plus t. The value of t in this case is given by x divided by 4 to the power 2 plus x divided by 4. Then the equation of the trajectory is given by y is equal to 2 x divided by 4 to the power 2 plus x divided by 4.
Now, this is the equation of the trajectory. Now we need to determine the shape of the trajectory. So notice that it is linear in Y, but however, it's quadratic in X. Okay? Then, whenever one of the variables is linear and the other is quadratic, the shape of the trajectory is parabola. Okay? Linear in one variable and quadratic in the other. And then the trajectory is a parabola. <clears throat> now, as for the third example, we need to determine the position vector, then answer. For part one, the position vector r, which is equal to OM, given by xi plus yj. Notice that these equations are the parametric equations because they are parameterized by t, and they are given by 2 cosine ti plus 2 sine tj. And here, let, let me say the following. Now, cosine of t, this is the same as to say that cosine of the angle t. Okay? So, what does cosine t multiplied by i means? It means that cosine of t multiplied by the unit vector i. Okay? So, here 2 is also multiplied by cosine t. So, here t, also, although it is, t stands for time, but here we are considering it to be an angle. So later, later on, I will uh, during the online classes, I will discuss more about the units. How come t is seconds, and we are calculating cosine of t, and t has the unit of second here because we have a unity that may have a different unit. Okay, I will discuss this more later during the online classes. So the position vector r is given by two cosine t i plus to sine tj. Now in number two, they are telling me to determine the trajectory. So one thing to mention whenever we have cosine and sine, so remember always that the trajectory is related to a circle, okay? So let me say that x is equal to two cosine t and y is equal to two sine t. And also it's import important to say the following. So whenever uh, the relation between x and y is independent of cosine and sine, it's a polynomial. So how do we solve it? We extract t from the linear relation and we replace it in the other variable to get the relation between x and y. Now in case uh, whenever we have cosine and sine, what we will do is that we will determine cosine of t as function of x and sine of t as function of y and now we will use the famous relation which is given by that cosine square of t plus sine square of t is equal to 1. We know that cosine of x square plus sine square of x is equal to 1 x maybe any angle for example if we have cosine square of 5x plus 1 plus sine square of 5x plus 1 this is always equal to 1 as long as the angle between the cosine and the sine is the same and we have power 2 and here let me explain more about this notation okay so what is this cosine square of t so first of all we agree that Cosine of t is cosine of the angle t, okay? So this can be written as cosine square of t plus sine square of t is equal to 1. But what about this power 2? Okay? Cosine square of x is simply cosine of x square. So this as if we are saying that cosine of x multiplied by cosine of x. But in order uh, to, avoid, to avoid writing the brackets all of the time, this power 2 here for the cosine of, cosine of x will be uh, raised uh, above the s here in the cosine and above the and in the sine. Okay? So why we are doing so? Because suppose that I say that uh, cosine 
suppose that we have two uh, two cosines here. Let let me say that cosine of x squared and cosine of x squared. Okay, this can be understood as cosine of x to the power two, and this can be understood as cosine of x to the power two. Okay, so here the power two stands for cosine of x, and here to the power two is for the x. So students may may confuse these two with each other in order to, to avoid this confusion whenever the power 2 is for all of the cosine we will simply write it like this okay so this as if you are saying that cosine of t multiplied by cosine of t plus sine of t multiplied by sine of t which is equal to 1 okay now in this case we are using the relation cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1. Now remember that we need to determine the trajectory. Now replacing cosine squared cosine t by x divided by 2. So x divided by 2. Remember that this power 2 is, all, is for the cosine of t which is given by x divided by 2. So this will be raised to the power 2. As for sine of t is given by y divided by 2 to the power 2 which is equal to 1. Now, and let me recall here that uh, the equation of a circle is given by uh, x minus a plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. Okay, so why I thought about a circle? Because circle is always related to cosine and sine. Now, let me complete the calculation here. Okay, so then this is given by x squared. divided by 4 plus y squared divided by 4 which is equal to 1 now 1 can be written as 4 divided by 4 now removing 4 then we have that x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 now in order to determine the properties of this circle uh, which is given by the center and the radius we need to write it in the following form now x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 we can say that x minus 0 to the power 2 plus y minus 0 to the power 2 is equal to 2 to the power 2 now why I have decomposed 4 as 2 to the power 2 now because 2 represent the radius and not 4 now in this case the trajectory is a circle of center O which is given by OO and which is the origin and radius R capital R let's say is equal to 2 meters okay now previously in the previous examples I didn't I didn't discuss the prop the characteristics of the parabola so what is the vertex of this parabola and I didn't discuss the, uh, the characteristics of the straight line so this is straight line has a slope which is equal to 3 so this is the slope and the y-intercept is 0 so this is a straight line passing through the origin of slope 3 uh, we, will, we will not discuss those of the parabola now as for the circle it's good practice to extract the center and the radius now here they are not telling me to, to plot the trajectory but let's plot it so in this case the particle will be moving in a plane like this so let me say again that this this here is not part of the answer okay so this is the x-axis having the unit m this is the y-axis having the unit m this is the origin and let's say that this is the unit vector i and this is the unit vector j so the particle m will be moving along the circle of center O. This is the center of the circle. And of radius 2 centimeter, uh, 2 meters, sorry. Suppose this is 1 and this is 2.
then the particle M will be moving along the circle either clockwise or anticlockwise okay now let's also consider this example we need to determine the position vector and to determine the trajectory so number one the position vector is given by R is equal to M given by XI plus YJ which is equal to 4 cosine t plus 2 multiplied by the unit vector i plus 4 sine t minus 1 multiplied by the unit vector g then the position vector r is given by 4 cosine of t plus 2 plus 4 sine t minus 1 g Now, as for number 2, we need to determine the trajectory. Then x is equal to 4 cosine t plus 2. y is equal to 4 sine t minus 1. Now, recall that what we have done previously is that we have written cosine of t as function of x and sine of t as function of y. And here we will do the same. Now, dragging 2 to the left-hand side, it will be given by x minus 2 and we will divide by 4. Then cosine of t is given by x minus 4 divided by 2 and here dragging minus 1 to the left hand side and dividing by 4 then sine of t is given by y plus 1 divided by 4 now using the famous relation which is given by cosine square of t plus sine square of t is equal to 1 now the expression of co cosine of t is given by x minus 4 divided by 2 to the power 2 plus y plus 1 divided by 4 to the power 2 is equal to 1 and from our prerequisite knowledge whenever the uh, parametric equations include cosine and sine this means that the equation of the trajectory is given by a circle which circle we need to determine its radius and its center so always always any circle is determined by two stuff by its center and by its radius so it's sufficient whenever somebody give me the center and the radius I can directly trace out the circle now recall that the equation of the circle is given by x minus a square plus y minus b square is equal to r square in order to extract the radius and the, and the center of the circle we need to sorry this is okay so here I have done this mistake Now, dragging 2 to the left-hand side, it will be minus 2 and dividing by 4, okay? So, this is x minus 2 divided by 4. Then, in order to, to extract the center and the radius, we need to convert this algebraic expression into the following form. And this is done by writing 1 as equal to 4. Sorry. Let me say that. It is given by x minus 2 to the power 2 divided by 16 plus y plus 1 to the power 2 divided by 16 and 1 can be written as the fraction of, of any two equal numbers and this is given by 16 by 16 y in order to simplify by 16 on both numbers then x minus 2 to the power 2 plus y plus 1 to the power 2 is equal to 16 this is not enough we need to write it in the following form minus sign here must appear in front of a and b in order to determine the exact value of a and b now x minus 2 to the power 2 okay here the minus sign appears plus y now here the plus okay a minus sign must, must appear in front of this but plus is equivalent to a another minus sign minus with minus it will be plus to the power 2 now 16 can be decomposed into 4 to the power 2 then in this case, comparing both relations, we can we can check that the center i is given by the coordinates. So, a in this case is given by two, and b in this case is given by minus one, and the radius is given by four meters. Okay. Then the trajectory 
is a circle of center i2 minus 1 and the radius r is equal to 4 meters then we can plot this circle uh, then the particle m is moving along a circle of radius r is equal to 4, centim 4 meters with a center i2 minus 1 okay then let's consider now exercise number 4 they are telling me a particle m moves in a uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion uh -huh. since here they specified that the trajectory of motion is rectilinear then the motion occurs in one dimension and not in two dimension then the moment they say that it is u a r m then the type of motion is u v r m then we can directly use the equations of motion that are given by x is equal to half a t square plus v zero t plus x zero v is equal to a t plus v zero and the acceleration a is constant okay now at the instant t one is equal to one second and t two is equal to three seconds the speed of the moving particles are given by v one two meters per second and v two is equal to four meters per second so what does uh, these uh, what does these speeds represent are they the instantaneous speed or average speed since we have defined this speed at a given instance so it is an instantaneous speed as well as v2 okay now in number one they are t they are telling us to calculate the acceleration of m here they didn't distinguish between uh, instantaneous acceleration and average acceleration because simply in the case of u vrm which is u arm a is constant so the instantaneous acceleration is equal to the average acceleration and the acceleration by definition is given by delta v divided by delta t so what does delta represent delta is the variation between two instants we usually take the final instant minus the initial the final is determined by two because the three seconds is greater than one second so it's given by v2 minus v1 divided by t2 minus t1 the value of v2 is given by 4 in the SI v1 is given by 2 divided by t2 which is 3 minus 1 now plugging this fraction on the calculator is equal to 1 since v is expressed in the SI both in meter per second and this is in the SI second then the unit of acceleration is meter per second square which is the, which is the SI then a is equal to 1 meter per second square so in this case this is equal to 1 meter per second square now in number 2 they are telling us to determine the equation of the speed m speed of m as function of time so we need to determine this equation we have that okay let's say since the type of motion is UARM between the brackets stands for UVRM then the speed as function of time is given by AT plus V0 okay but we have already calculated the value of A to be but A is equal to 1 meter per second square then we have that V is equal to T plus V0 now in order to determine completely the speed of fu as function of time we need to determine the value of V0 okay v0 stands for the initial speed now in order to determine the value of v0 we need to determine the value of v and t at a given instant so we know that whenever t1 is equal to one second the value of v1 is given by two meters per second or we can say that whenever t2 is equal to three seconds v2 is equal to four meters per second so here if we label v by one then t must be labeled by one if we have labeled v by 2 we can label t by 2 okay then we can say that v1 is equal to t1 plus v0 now we are interested in determining the value of v0 the value of v1 is given by 2 and the value of t1 is given by 1 plus v0 now what's the type of this equation linear equation and one unknown the unknown is v0 then v0 is given by 2 minus 1 which is equal, which is equal to 1 meter per second now instead of determining v0 from the instant 1 we have could determine v0 from the instant 2 because using this equation v is equal to t plus v0 knowing that we are interested in determining the value of v0 this can be uh, 
So this is an equation of three variables, one, two, and three. It can be transformed into equation of one variable by knowing the values v and t simply by labeling them by the instant two. Here we have labeled them by the instant one. The value of v2 is given in this case by four. The value of t2 is by three plus v0. Then in this case, v0 is equal to four minus three divided by one uh, minus one, which is equal to one meter per second. So the value of v0 is equal to one meter per second. So notice that we have calculated v0 at the instant one and v0 at the instant two. Both values are the same. Why? Because v0 is a constant independent using which equation that we have used to calculate the value of v0 the value of v0 will be the same okay so we are free to use either instant one or instant two now as for number three they are telling me to determine the equation x of t for the motion of m take x0 is equal to zero meters so the equation x of t is given by this so let's say all let's also also justify that since the type of motion is UARM, which is a special case of UVRM. Then we have that x is equal to half AT squared plus V0T plus X0. In order to determine X of T, it's sufficient to determine the constants A, V0, and X0. A is given by 1, V0 is given by 1, whereas X0 is given by 0. Then X is equal to half t square plus t x0 zero, zero okay so this is a parametric equation x as function of t now exercise number five a particle has an uh, in the orthonormal system x or y the following position vector so previously what uh, we were we were given the parametric equations and we were writing the position vector here we are given the position vector and we need to write the parametric equation. So it's a good habit to be able to go from the parametric equations to the position vector and vice versa. Then here in this case the parametric equations are given by x is equal to 2 cosine of the angle 2t and y is equal to 2 sine of 2t. Okay. Now in number 2 they are telling me to determine the shape of the trajectory. Then whenever the, the parametric equations include cosine and sine, this gives us a hint that the trajectory is a circle. Okay, then x is equal to 2 cosine 2t. The trick in determining the trajectory is to write sine of t as function of x. So here cosine of 2t is equal to x divided by 2 and, so, and sine of 2t is equal to y divided by 2. Now, using the famous relation cosine square of 2t plus sine square of 2t, independent of the angle, but what is important that the angle of cosine and sine must be the same. Now, replacing cosine of, two, cosine of 2t by x divided by 2 and the sine square by y divided by 2 is equal to 1. Recall that the equation of the circle is given by the form x minus a to the power 2 plus y minus b to the power 2 is equal to r to the power 2. Then here, it's given by x square divided by 4 plus y square divided by 4. In order to get rid of the denominator on the left hand side, 1 can be written as 4 divided by 4. Simplifying 4 on both numbers, we have that x square plus y square is equal to 4. And this can be written in the form of x minus 0 to the power 2 plus y minus 0 to the power 2, which is equal to 4, can be decomposed as 2 to the power 2. Now the trajectory is a circle of center, which is the origin O, and radius. R is equal to 2 meters. Why 2 meters? Because everything is expressed in the SI. Now, as for exercise number 6, they are telling us the coordinates of a moving particle P in the space reference system OIJ are given by x is equal to 3 cosine t and y is equal to 3 sine t. In number 1, they are telling us to determine the, to write the position vector of P at any time 
at any time means that the position vector will depend on time as we shall see then r which is equal to okay xi plus 3j so notice that here the vector is only for i and not for x plus yj is equal to 3 cosine t multiplied by the unit vector i plus 3 sine t multiplied by the unit vector j so this is the position vector it is an equality between vectors okay now a number two they are telling us to determine the equation of the trajectory they use the shape of the trajectory so it's basically the same question then we have that x is equal to 3 cosine t and by this cosine of t is equal to x divided by 3 for sure when it includes sine and cosine this means that the shape of the trajectory will be a circle of center and radius to be determined now using the famous relation which is given by cosine square of t plus sine square of t is equal to 1 then x divided by 3 to the power 2 plus y divided by 3 to the power 2 is equal to 1 x squared divided by 9 plus y squared divided by 9 1 can be written as 9 divided by 9 then we can say that x minus 0 to the power 2 plus y minus 0 to the power 2 is equal to 3 to the power 2 then it is a circle, the trajectory is a circle of center O which is the origin and radius R is equal to 3 meters now in number three, they are telling us to locate the positions of the moving part of the moving object P at three different instants: zero, pi by two second, and pi second. Then, by locate the position. It's, suffi it's sufficient to calculate the position vector at three at this three instance. Now, for t is equal to zero seconds, so this can be also written as r as function of time when it's given by zero seconds. So it's three replacing t by zero. this is equal to 3 because cosine of 0 is equal to 1 and sine of 0 is equal to 0 so this is simply 3i because anything multiplied by 0 is 0 then r at t is equal to 0 seconds is given by the unit vector 3i uh, we have mentioned that the shape of the trajectory is uh, is a circle so here in this case we can check that for 3 so it lies on the circle itself okay because the length of this vector is 3 now for t is equal to pi by 2 seconds r which is equal to r computed at the instant pi by 2 seconds is given by 3 cosine pi by 2 i plus 3 sine pi by 2 j now cosine of pi by 2 is 0 sine pi by 2 is 1 so this is equal to 3 j then the position vector r computed at the instant pi by 2 seconds is given by the unit vector 3 j okay Now for t is equal to pi seconds r which is equal to r computed at t is equal to pi seconds is equal to 3 cosine of pi i plus 3 sine of pi j so cosine of pi is equal to minus 1 minus 1 multiplied by 3 is minus 3 sine of pi is 0 then r at t is equal to pi seconds is equal to minus 3i so as you can see that because r is dependent on time 
computed at each at each instant the value of R it changes, but R uh, the point M remains on the circle of center O and radius three meters. Now in exercise number seven they are telling us in the space reference system OIJ the position vector of a moving particle M is given by uh, any is given any instant by the expression R is equal to T I plus T square J. Everything is expressed in that side. Now, in number one, they are telling us to give the parametric equations of motion of M, knowing that x is equal to 2t and y is equal to t squared. These are the parametric equations. In number two, determine the equation of the trajectory described by M, which is the relation completely between x and y. Now, x is equal to 2t, referring to the linear term. Linear term happens in x, then t is equal to x divided by 2. Now, we know that y is equal to t squared. Let's say that replace t is equal to x divided by 2 in y. Then y is equal to t squared, which is given by x divided by 2 to the power 2. Then the trajectory is given by x squared, y is equal to x squared divided by 4. Now, what's the shape of the trajectory? Since it's linear in y, quadratic in x, linear in one variable, quadratic in the other, then the shape of the trajectory is parabola. In number 3, they are telling us to determine the displacement vector delta r between the two instants t1 and t2. So it's basically given by r2 minus r1. In order to determine delta r, we need to determine the position vector r at the instant 2 and the position vector r at the instant 1. Then r1 is given by r for t is equal to t1, which is equal to r for t is equal to 0, which is t1, then it's given by 0 multiplied by 2 is 0, and 0 multiplied by t, okay, 0 to the power 2 is 0. So this is r1. As for r2, it's given by r for t2 is equal to 2. Okay, here I must, okay, this is second. Now for sure this is expressed in meters. Now 2, 2i two plus 2 to the power 2j. So this is given by 4i plus 4j expressed in meters. Usually whenever we are writing vectors, we don't place the unit, okay? Then delta r, which is equal to r2 minus r1, 4i plus 4j minus 0i plus 0j okay this is 0 so delta r will be basically 4i plus 4j but suppose that here we have numbers other than the 0 so how do we subtract two vectors or add two vectors then it's given by 4 minus 0 multiplied by the unit vector i we take i as a common factor and 4 minus 0 multiplied by the unit vector j we take j as a common factor so it will be 4i plus 4j. So the displacement delta r is given by 4i plus 4j. This is the displacement vector between the two instances t1 and t2. As for the final exercise of this video, we need to, okay, everything is clear. We need to determine the equation of the trajectory. In order to determine the equation of the trajectory, first we need to specify the parametric equations that are given by x is equal to t and y is equal to t squared. Now referring to the linear term, we have that t is equal to x. Replace t is equal to x and y. Then y, which is equal to t squared, is equal to x squared. Then y is equal to x squared linear in one variable and quadratic in the other, then the, then the trajectory is a parabola. Now we need to locate the positions of the moving particle at t equal to 0 second, 1 second at 2 seconds. So simply we need to determine the position vector r. Then at t is equal to 0 seconds, r for t is equal to 0 seconds is given by simply 0i plus 0j t equal to 1 second, r for t is equal to 1 second is given by 1i plus 
1 j which is equal to i plus j and for t is equal to 2 seconds the position vector r for t is equal to 2 seconds is given by 2i plus 4j here because 2 is raised to the power 2 now in number 3 they are telling us does the particle pass in the point of coordinates 2 3 justify now if we need to know whether the particle passes through a given point or no so we must refer to the trajectory we know that y is equal to x square now here x is given by 2 and y is given by 3 in order to determine whether the particle passes through this point we need to check if these coordinates verify the trajectory because the trajectory is the equation that tells us the path of the particle then let's say if so the value of y is given by 3 question mark 2 to the power 2 then 3 equal to 4 is impossible now because these coordinates didn't verify the trajectory this means that the particle doesn't pass through this point okay let's say since the point 3 4 doesn't verify the trajectory equation then the answer to the question would be the particle does not pass through okay sorry not 3 4 2 3 does not pass through 2 3 okay so that's it for me in this video guys in the next part we will discuss the different types of motion in two dimensions